Hi everyone, today we're going to do some image compositing and uh, in this session we're going to be looking at how to select objects in different types of ways and how to quick mask and then how to bring different elements together and colour balance them and make adjustments until you end up with a new picture. And what we're going to do is this uh, Statue of Liberty, we're going to make it look like it's a post-apocalyptic scene. So we're going to have the water level rising and we'll have rust all over the Statue of Liberty. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, where it says background layer, I'm dragging it to a new and it's going to become a new layer that and the uh, background element there, that's just for safety. You know, if you messed up anything on this top layer, it's fine because you can always go back to the other one. I'm just going to rename this Statue of Liberty. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to replace the sky first of all because this sky is very calm. We want something a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to go in Let's just have a look at these settings. Right, at the moment, my Magic Wand tool, which is W, uh, is set so it looks for the same colour pixels no matter where on the page it is. I'm going to turn on Contiguous, and if you're on Windows, it might just say Contiguous. Then what it does is it'll only look for the same colours and tones uh, that are adjacent to each other. And that's what we want for the sky, really. I'm holding down Shift to um, extend the selection. By the way, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, so luckily you can pause and rewind and stuff like that. I'm going to go into the area around the crown, and I'm going to put a caps lock on. And what happens then is it turns the icon into a crosshair, which just makes it that little bit more um, accurate, a lot easier to place. We do have a small issue here which is um, this mask, the selection has gone onto the body a bit. So there are ways you could change that. You could uh, select a lasso tool. In fact, I'll do it now and show you. Take away from the selection by holding down Alt. Um, but an even better way is to press Q. Now Q brings it into a quick mask and it's also down here. So you can either toggle it like this or press Q to toggle it. Uh, if you double click on the icon, um, you can change the colour of the mask. But what this basically does is it, it's more of a visual way of masking. It's a lot easier to see first of all, but you can paint in and paint out details that you want to remain masked. Which sounds a bit weird, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. All masks use either black or white or any sort of in-between shade of grey. Um, if I paint in black, it shows up as red here. If I press Q again, can you see? It's now selected. Press Q again to go back into that mode. And if I exchange these colours and start playing with uh, white, and you can do that by pressing X to exchange, it's far quicker to do, it'll paint it out. And can you see? It's altered the selection. And the good thing about quick masking is it allows for an awful lot more subtlety. So I'm just going to neaten up this. So it's just probably this part here. Uh, that looks a bit ropey. You can always turn the opacity of the layer mask down. Sorry, of the quick mask down by going onto here and putting the opacity different. But it's fine for what we're using. And the, the really powerful thing about this is you can end up with a very soft uh, edge to something if you want. Paint that a little bit back in. So I can make something which is really hard edge there. And then I can go next to it and do something with a soft brush, which is quite amorphous and, and bizarre. In fact, I'm going to, I'm using a graphics tablet. I've just put the pressure setting on it so I can really get a subtle uh, selection here. Now I'm going to go back and press Q. These are here, but look what happens when I try and paint it over them, right? It's perfectly selected sharp mask and if I try the same here it's gonna see what happens it's remembered all that amount of um, information that I've painted in there and that'll happen like if you want to go on to brightness and contrast for instance if I put the brightness up can you see it still sort of fades out around here put the contrast up as well in fact I'll do it like this See? So it retains all that. So it's, it's a really good way of um, 
masking out areas because uh, you can afford an awful lot more subtlety than is basically present in the normal uh, selection tools. So with that being said, let's have a look, no, press X to exchange it. I'm going to put a bit of a soft brush around here just to knock back this bit of the flame. Okay, so happy with that, pretty well masked. Press Q again, and now we're going to delete all those pixels by pressing delete. Now it doesn't look any different, but it's because we've got a, a duplicate underneath it. So we'll turn the eyeball off, and there you go, that's nicely uh, cut out. So if you go into Google, and I've already been doing some searching on there, uh, make sure, I've just typed in storm clouds, you can do something similar. Make sure you go into tools and make sure that the image is large. You can also filter and put Creative Commons on rather than copyrighted images. Uh, because this is for education, I think we can use it as uh, fair use. So I'm just going to copy that image. Now if you do it with any other image, can you see you saw a tiny little grey bar underneath? See that? That shows that it's loading up, so I wouldn't copy the image until that's finished loading. So I've right clicked it, copied it, and now I'm going to paste it in by using Control and V. Right, it's on the wrong layer, it's dropped in before, so I'm going to click and drag down between these two layers. Can you see the little blue line? That's where it's going to go. Now we need to resize it. So I'm going to go onto V for move, and up at the top, if you're on Windows, it might have a uh, tick box saying show transform controls. You want to put those on because it will make these little, little notches appear in it. Um, with the corner ones you can scale it, with the side ones you can just stretch it out uh, on one axis and if you go a bit further outwards it will turn into a rotation tool like that so you can actually rotate it. Um, if you make a mess of it just press escape and it will reset it. One of the things you should do is hold down shift and we're going to drag this, uh, this corner one, this corner handle. If you don't hold shift down, you could stretch the image and it'll just look uh, like a basically a shoddy, cheap Photoshop job. Right, I'm going to go for that. That looks okay. Press enter and it'll redraw that. Now, the issue is here is Lady Liberty here is has got far too much colour and it looks, it looks like it's been shot on a sun, summer day, which of course it was. So I'm going to click on it and we're going to make some adjustments to it. So first of all, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Hue and Saturation, because there's a lot of colour in this, so I want to desaturate it. So make sure you've got Preview on here. I'm going to desaturate it and really bleach out some of the colour. And if you click Preview, you can sort of see before and after. It's not a huge difference, but it's, a, it's enough to have an effect. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, I'm going to go to Brightness and Contrast. I'm going to click use legacy which uses like an older version of the brightness and contrast from uh, previous versions of Photoshop but I, I believe most of the time the better. So we can grey it out, obviously it doesn't want to go that much but this thing we want to push into the distance a little bit. So as you know the perspective as you go into the distance you, the contrast uh, tends to go down. I'll push the brightness down a little bit. I'll bring a tiny bit more contrast in but that, that's okay it sort of sits well with this now. The only other issue is the, the colour, there's not very much colour in this sky. So let's go on to this sky layer. Go to image, adjustments, colour balance. I, I'm going to put just a little bit of a, a cyan-y, greeny blue colour in. So I'm going to move this towards uh, cyan, a tiny bit towards green, a tiny bit towards blue. Now again, let's preview that. See, that's made a big difference, that. Only a very subtle change, but this is how you need to do it with Photoshop. It all adds up. So we're quite happy with that. So I'm going to go to File and Open. And I've got a, a couple of Ocean elements here. I'm going to click on this one and show you. Okay, so you've got like a uh, middle ground to background ocean. And I've also got this wave, which is obviously we're going to put in the foreground. Now these are PNG files. And uh, the good thing about a PNG file is it can re retain a level of transparency. If you try to do this with a JPEG, this area will be, when you drop it in, it will come in as uh, a solid white. With this, it actually retains, if, if the original uh, creator of this file cut it out from the background, it'll keep it like that. So if you search online for PNG files, um, they're basically ready-made and cut out for you.
So let's get this first one and all I'm going to do is click open and it'll load it up in another tab here. If you click on the title, drag it and let go, it will float on a window in front of your other image. All you need to do then is with the move tool, which is V, click on it, drag it in, then let go and it'll plonk it there. So we're going to put this, where should we put this? About there. Now we need to um, move the Statue of Liberty behind it. So I'm going to click on this and drag it behind. And now we've got our Statue of Liberty off in the distance. Uh, but the issue with this is the Statue of Liberty is actually stu stood on the horizon there. So in reality, if it's that far back, this thing would be a few hundred miles high, which is ridiculous. So what we need to do is we need to cut out some of these waves here. The easiest way to do that is get your Magic Wand tool again and we're going to select the background of the Statue of Liberty because you can select areas where there's no pixels and actually even now if we take that contiguous off untick it now when I click on it it's going to look for all blank pixels on that layer so I'll click on it again and can you see it's filled in that 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 and that and we can even check it in quick mass mode you can get rid of that other layer if you want in fact, let's get rid of everything else but the Statue of Liberty. We want to um, have a very sort of soft line, probably about here, um, where we can cut this thing out. So we're in quick mass, we might as well do it in, in this. So I'm going to start painting back into this, but now I'm going to make the brush a lot smaller, which will actually make the edge a bit harder. And try and put in a bit of a better, better line. Right, so we have a, a selection now. But what do we do with it? Well, we're going to press Q. So that's the selection now. And this end is actually a little bit softer. But at the moment, we've got the sky selected when we want the Statue of Liberty being selected. So all we need to do is press Control I, and that will invert the selection and enable you to get the pixels inside. If I press Delete now, bye bye to the statue. So what we need to do is make sure we've selected layer 2 which is uh, where our water is. We can turn off every other layer if you want. This is the good thing about selections as well, it doesn't matter what layer, it doesn't matter what your selection is, you can apply it to whichever layer, as long as your layer is highlighted that's what it's going to um, apply it to. For instance, see, there's no Statue of Liberty on this but there is an outline of it. Anyhow, let's just press delete and can you see it's sliced off that little bit of water there. So now we can turn everything back on and it should sit, you know, reason, yeah, that's not too bad. It's reasonably comfortably in there. So I'm going to bring in this um, other C element. So file open. And no, in fact, let's do file place. This is a better another way of uh, doing it. We'll go file place embedded. And um, if you're on a, a um, earlier version of Photoshop, it might just be file place. So just be aware for that. I'm going to click on it, click place, boom. There it is. So again, we're going to use a move tool. We're going to put this in this corner. We're going to drag the corner out. And let's bring it up fairly high. Hopefully without destroying the image quality. This area now is more contrasting than this, which doesn't make sense because uh, stuff in the foreground really should be higher contrast. So I'll go into Images, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast. I'm going to use Legacy again. I'm going to pump up the contrast just a bit. Maybe make it a little bit brighter. It's a lot of back and forth really. So that's got a lot more life to it. It really brings it forward in the picture. Click OK. Now it's very blue. This is much more of a marine green type of colour. So let's just change the colour balance as well. We can probably tone this down actually, so we'll go a bit too far with it and then tone it down afterwards. Right, so I'm going to OK that. And now let's just desaturate a little bit. So it's image adjustments, hue saturation, and just knock down that saturation because it's it's extremely bright, intense colour. And we want it to be, there you go, that's a lot better. Right, um, we're going to put some rust on the Statue of Liberty now and we're going to use uh, blending modes to do this. So as we can see the layers stack on top of each other but they just sort of replace whatever's underneath. 
what you can do is where it says normal you can change these uh, layers for different types uh, so they blend with the layers underneath them so for instance this one is a normal we've got dissolve and these next five ones darken the top layer so we've got darken if you just look at this uh, wave that I've got on there we've got multiply color burn linear and darker color and underneath the next uh, five all lighten it in different ways so you've got lighten you've got screen color dodge which is quite a sort of harsh photographic way of working linear dodge lighter color and then you've got overlay and all these next lot are to do with um, they both lighten and darken them and and do different things with contrast there's a lot there to think about but you don't really need to remember them you just throw something in there and see if it works rust texture we'll find a nice bit of rust that we like that is rather nice oh and it's a huge file that as well can you see it loading 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 done right click it copy it let's go back onto here and all we're going to do is control v to paste it in thought that'd be the case this is a huge file so I'm gonna we're still on the move tool I'm gonna make it a bit smaller I'm gonna rotate it as well and as long as it's in front of the Statue of Liberty it's cool press enter to commit to that now we need to cut this out in a Statue of Liberty shape so rather than try and mask it all out again we go into the Statue of Liberty layer we select where the background is in fact I should show you rather than just guessing Right, Statue of Liberty layer is all selected. Turn the layers back on, turn the rust layer back on, but now remember, click on the rust layer. So when we press delete now, it's gonna use this selection and delete all these pixels like that. Right, now does that look convincing? Nope, not at all. This is where we're gonna use the layer blending modes. If you're on a PC, by the way, if you double click this, um, you should get a little blue outline around it and then you can use the arrow keys to go from the top of the list to the bottom of the list uh, on a Mac on this latest version of Photoshop it actually previews it as, as it's going so you just pick one you like that one's quite nice actually multiply got color burn that's a bit more intense linear burn I don't think any of the lighter ones will do but some of these might work so it's just a matter of choosing what you like I'm going to go. Hmm. Right, I'm going to go with color burn, right? But I'm going to back it off because I like what it's doing, but it's just doing it too much. So I can go to the opacity and really start to back it off. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Now, what we're going to do is put some, we're going to actually draw some rust on here. So we're going to make a new layer. I'm going to go onto our brush. I'm going to make a small brush by using the left bracket key. Go on to our colours, find a rust colour, so I'm going to go red first of all, lots of saturation, move it to orange, what a sort of orangey brown colour, more saturation needed, there we go, that's quite a nice rust colour, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to paint it into areas where I feel like rust would sort of gather and would, would run down with the rain, so this is like a natural crease that probably run down there you'll definitely have some on the hands ah but think about physics and well not physics I suppose it is you'll get most of the rust around the bottom because that's where all the water is interacting with it so let's paint a load down here now this looks ridiculous at the moment granted but we are going to be doing some more with it we'll put a few patches here and there right now what we're going to do is we're going to blend this all in and what we do is we're going to use this one which is a smudge tool now you can vary how strong the smudge tool is I'm at 90% at the moment so it might be a bit strong but you can literally yeah I'm going to put it down to about 50% or 40 odd you can just grab this stuff and just sort of smear it everywhere it doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be blending this all in using another blending mode but this is really to show you the sort of how powerful these blending modes can be. Look at that. <laughs> um, I am using a graphics tablet with this. Um, I tend to always use Photoshop with a graphics tablet 
because you've just got a lot more precision and you've got the pressure sensitivity as well. So let's just distress that a bit more. Are we happy with that? Well, we don't know yet. So what I'm going to do now is change the blending mode again. So let's have a look through. Darken works all right. It's just giving it that bit of color. Multiply works very well. Let's just see. Let's just ah overlay. Right, overlay is nice. A bit bright though. So I'm going to go with soft light, and I'm, I'm going to see. Let's just yeah, just take the opacity down a little bit. So it's warmed it up a little bit, and it's giving it some real uh, rust feel to it. You can continue and get loads more rust textures and, and do all sorts with it. Right, so what else do we have to add? Um, I think we'll put a boy in now, like a, a floating boy. So I found this online, and we need to cut this one out now. So I'm using the magic wand tool. Make sure contiguous is checked on. I'm going to click in the sky. Now the problem is, if we try and click down here, can you see it starts selecting the wrong type of area because this is highly textured. So what we need to do with this is like a two-pronged approach for the most sort of for the quickest way to select it. So I'm just using shift and I'm selecting all these areas. Just press caps lock so I can go in between these nice and accurately. Get these bits of cloud. So that's not bad. And this time, I mean I could go into quick mask if I want, but for what it's worth, I'm going to use the lasso tool. L for lasso and then select the Polygon lasso, lasso Tool. I'm going to add to the selection. Let's just check in Quick Mask. It's not too bad, there's a few little areas there. I'm going to hold down Shift and add to the selection. Now when you're using this Lasso Tool, see that? That's just added that bit. When you use Lasso Tool, you click and it'll drag out a line. And then whenever you want to sort of change direction, you just click again. So I'm going to click, 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 click. And when you want to close it up, you either go back to the place where it started and you'll get this O shape, which will seal it, or you can click, get close to it, and then just double click and it'll seal it up itself. Let's check the quick mask. Okay, so we're going to add to this one with the lasso. So one click there, one there, one there. We can overlap this sky because we want all of that. Bring it all the way down here, join up, right? Quick mask. Yeah, more or less got the whole lot. Let's cheat. Go back in with our brush. Just get the last bit. And let's be finicky and get rid of these little bits. You could obviously spend a long time getting these perfect. Okay, happy with that. Press Q. Now, the problem is that if we tried to drag this somewhere, it would actually drag all the sky and everything because that's what we have selected. And that's you can tell that by these outlines. So we need to invert the selection, which means just to turn it in on itself. So select, inverse. So instead of selecting everything on the outside, it's now got everything on the inside. So we can move this onto our other picture now. The easiest way to do that is to grab the title bar of it, click it and hold the mouse down, pull down like that and then let go and it'll snap to its normal size and we've got our picture there in the background. Use a move tool, click and drag on this and just drag it, it'll turn into a plus hopefully and then let go and here we have it. We need to put this behind this wave so that's dead easy to do, we just drag this and well, no, we need to keep going, there you go. And can you see the PNG? It's, it's kept all that nice bit of transparency. I'm going to just turn it inwards a little bit. OK that. Uh, I might darken it a little bit. Image adjustments. Brightness contrast. Use legacy. That's quite nice. Right, we're getting there. Uh, coming back to this file though. I feel like this orange is a bit too strong. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to actually just desaturate it a little bit. Even though it's a different type of layer, it's a color burn layer, it still, still obeys all the laws. See, that's a bit better. That's a bit grayer now. OK, that. So all we need to do now is tie this all together because these colors are still a bit, a bit off. So we're going to put some uh, filters over it. And we're actually going to do this with gradients. 
So we put a new layer on. We go on to G for gradient. If it's on paint bucket, just hold it down and put it to gradient. I'm going to click on here to the gradient editor. I'm going to pick a gradient at random, but we're going to I'm going to make a sort of horrible sludgy uh, pollution type of color. So I'm going to click on this red one, click on the color. I'm going to make a like a sort of mustard yellow color. And that green's quite nice, but it's a bit it's a bit too saturated. So I'm going to click on it. This is saturation here, S for saturation. Use this slider and start to desaturate it. Can you see? That's what it was and that's what it is now. So it's still green but barely. And what other minging colour can we have? Have like a, a well that might be nice. Disgusting brown colour. Right, so not a colour you want you want to be hanging around. If you indeed do hang around with colours. In fact I'm going to change this red and put it there instead. Just dragging them around. Right, that's cool. Click OK. Now I've got a linear gradient selected, so what happens now is you click and you drag and it draws a line out. Now if I click and have a very short line and let go, it's going to put this gradient just going across that line. It starts the gradient at the start of the line, ends it at the end. If you want it more subtle than that, which I obviously do, click and drag along the line. And the longer line you have, uh, the more subtle it becomes. I'm going to drag it the other way though. So I want it to be darker at the front. And again, we're going to use a blending mode. Let's just see what we need this to sort of darken it and try and bring everything together a little bit. Multiply is quite nice. Screen looks good actually. See, so you could do that and then darken the image afterwards. But let's see if we've got anything overlay. Soft light is nice. I'm going to take the opacity down because it's affecting the colours a little bit too much. It's before and after. It's giving it a bit more, just a bit more variation. New layer. I'm going to make another gradient. And this one is intended just to make the whole image look a bit duller because we're actually going to light up this torch in a minute. So that blue colour can stay. I quite like that. But we'll move them up. I'm going to get rid of this by clicking it and just dragging away and then it gets rid of it. I'm going to click here, click on this, and really darken that down, almost to black. In fact, we'll get rid of the yellow and just have those two. Oops. There we go. Not a big change there, but never mind. Well, in fact, just brighten it a tiny bit. That's more like it. OK, that. So we want the darkest area to be at the top here. So let's drag this down wrong way so drag it upwards okay and again use blending modes now whatever blending mode we use on this we're gonna have to uh, bring the opacity down because it's just too strong otherwise right so multiply is looking good right so I've used multiply and it's really knocked everything down and what we need to do now is uh, light up this lamp and then perhaps just do a couple of uh, global changes to everything so the best way to do that is we're going to make a safety copy of everything we've got up to now. So we've had the, if we have the top layer selected, we go down to the bottom, hold down shift and click, and it should select everything there. Now we've got a nice keyboard shortcut, which is Control alt shift e for echo. And what that does is it makes a copy of everything and sticks it all into one layer. And in fact, I'm going to drag that and make another copy of that, just like another safety copy. So finally, we're going to put this uh, torch in. So we're going to use a brush. Now, a normal way of painting with a brush is obviously painty, painty, painty. But like layers, brushes can also have blending modes. So we can go up here and actually change it to something called Color Dodge. I'm going to get a soft brush. So if you want to adjust the softness, I can do it on the fly with uh, the Mac. But you can click on here, adjust the hardness there. Or if you're using your keyboard shortcuts, so you've got the right bracket key to make larger, left to go smaller. But if you want to soften it, hold down shift. All the way to the left makes it softer. All the way to the right makes it harder. Right, so I've got this. I'm just going to start clicking in here. And it should set it on fire. 
You don't need to go too crazy with it. But it is fun, so be careful. I'm going to choose a yellow. Getting on towards white. I'm just going to do the centre, so I need to bring it ever so slightly in. And that looks, yeah, it looks all right. What I'll do, I'll do one more, but I'm going to make this huge. I'm going to take the opacity of the brush down to about 15%. And I'm going to select a orange colour. So I want some, I want to see if it's going to affect the mood of the whole thing. Yeah, so it's just making the top half of this image warmer. And if you want, what you can do is you can have a look on on the statue and just think, right, well, is this going to catch anyway? So you could you could start, you know, painting in highlights all over the the model. But it just depends on how long you want to you want to keep on this. So I'll just back those off. Right, we're more or less done. I think a final colour balance is in order. Oh, and by the way, seeing as we've got this on its own layer, you can always take the opacity down of this top layer, which will reveal this layer underneath without the lamp. So if you feel like you've gone too far, you can, you can always do that. Um, right, yeah, let's do a, a colour balance. So let's go to adjustments, go on to colour balance, and I think I might make the whole thing a bit cooler. That sort of works. But I still feel there's too much orange here as well. So this is when a quick mask comes in absolutely brilliantly. So I'm going to put the quick mask on. Oh, make sure you're not on colour dodge anymore. Put it back on normal. Put the opacity up to 100. And I'm going to draw in here, just like we did before. But I'm not even starting off with the selection, I'm just going straight into the quick mask. Okay. Now I want to, I'll soften this because it's, it's still got a hard edge to it. So I can put a filter on this. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Right, now look at that. That's a really soft selection. You're not even going to be able to see that. Click OK with that. Press Q to go back to normal. And I'm going to desaturate this a little bit more. Adjustments, hue saturation, and let's just desaturate it a little bit more. So you can go straight back to grey, but we don't want to go that far. You can change the hue. Hue is just another word for colour, but I think the hue is more or less fine as it is. And there you go, it's got a really subtle colour change. So that looks, uh, looks pretty good really. It's not too bad. You could obviously start to add in other areas like we added in oil rigs and stuff and it's, it's just something to experiment around with and, and play around with. Right, so perhaps have a go at that. I think there is a version that I did. It's not easy to do when you're doing a video on it, uh, but there should be one I did earlier. So let's look at that one with a bit more time spent on it, obviously. There you go. So, you know, blending modes are slightly different. Um, this torch I've got reflecting into here. We've got some oil rigs in the background. We've still got the same boy. I've reflected this into the water using that same technique with the color dodge. And it works pretty well. If you want to have a go at this, um, all of these files are quite, quite straightforward to get online. And if you do struggle with your color mixing, easiest thing to do is work in black and white and then all you're bothered about is the contrast so even seeing that we could start altering stuff so uh, goodbye